Now, this suddenly injects new life into this conversation we're having a lot a month or so ago. The House is looking at fast-tracking it by tying it to, well, relief or money towards Ukraine and indeed towards Israel, correct? That's exactly right. We had a prior bill um, that did basically the same thing that this one looks to do, pass in the House already. It ran into some pushback from senators who thought that the timeline for divestiture was too short. So what House Speaker Mike Johnson has done is basically put this in a wrapper with really key items like aid for Ukraine and aid for Israel, things that appeal to both sides of the aisle, and made some of those changes. They've extended the deliberation period for a divestiture to kind of satiate some of the concerns from key senators. So we do expect this to be voted on on Saturday. We do believe that this will pass the House again in this wrapper of bills. And in a uh, very D.C. fashion, the Senate and Joe Biden said that they will both quickly take this effort up if it passes the House on Saturday. I, I think there's just still so many questions on how this would work, whether it's next month, next year. You make a really interesting observation in your Tech Daily that the concern is Chinese interference, which, as you write, is largely hypothetical at this point. So TikTok's faced with a divest or ban. You and I reported last month, the month before, that the company's position is we're just not going to do it. That's right. They will push for legal challenges before this becomes a divestiture situation. ByteDance certainly does not want to actually carve out this really valuable asset. And I do expect that in that year-long, um, almost a year that they would have to fight this or figure out some kind of separation, they will be fighting tooth and nail. We've heard from the company that they plan on leaning into a First Amendment argument. Uh, I'm sure that both them and their supporters will be picking apart the specific language of the bill because, Ed, as we wrote back then, this still remains a really unprecedented situation to have such a large consumer tech company actually forced to separate uh, from its owner by any country, uh, it, particularly the U.S., where the social media industry kind of has its, its home in TikTok's competitors. And what if there's a ban? You cite some data for the Center for Economic Policy Research that you'd literally have to pay college students, as an example, to delete the app from their phone. That's right. They say $59 a month or uh, over $700 a year would, is what you'd have to pay them. That's no small dollar amount for a college student. But this ban is actually not going to be paying its users to relinquish TikTok. It's almost a payment in kind. Congress is saying, we'll protect you from this kind of invisible existential threat of China and their potential influence or data hoovering capabilities. Uh, so I do expect that folks could be pretty upset. But with the new deadline, there's an important distinction in timing. Had the original bill passed along this same time frame, had Senate passed the bill and Biden signed it into law, that deadline for a divestiture would have come right around the election. With this extension in timing, this actually pushes that decision into the next presidential administration, past the election, and I'm sure that politicians don't want to be making the argument right around election day to their important young constituents why they shouldn't be, you know, looked at negatively if they in fact voted to pass this bill.